friends, ladies and gentlemen, at this time we are going to begin the funeral services for Sean Sokol. If you have a cell phone or a pager, I would ask for you to please take a moment to turn it off or place it in the silent mode. And officiating today's services will be Rabbi Ari Margolis from Congregation Or Shalom in Vernon Hills. As we begin our service, the rabbi will lead the family in the tradition of Korea. And just again, one final reminder, please take a moment to make sure your cell phones are silenced. Thank you. Welcome to all who have come here on this day to honor and remember our beloved Sean. Sean Sokol, who lived life to the fullest, who knew how to love and knew how to share love. And we're going to begin today, um, as we, we know that Sean didn't often have words that he was able to use to fully express himself. He expressed himself in, in small spurts and gestures. And so we're going to honor his memory first by allowing his family to come forward and express themselves with an act of tearing we call kriya, a way in which we can express ourselves without words, uh, the ways in which our hearts are torn. And so we're going to invite you to come up with, uh, with me right up in here in front of the room. And so we are here on this day to remember Sean Sokol and all that he has brought to us in his short and long 45 years. The poet has written, If our love could just have saved you, you never would have died. In life we loved you dearly, but in death we love you still. In our hearts you hold a place that no one else can fill. It broke our hearts to lose you. But you didn't go alone, for a part of us went with you the day God called you home. And this is what we're here today to do, is to honor and to name that part of us that has left us, and to honor and remember the person who always remembered us, the person whose piercing blue eyes shined on our faces every time he saw us. The person who had an amazing recall for the people that he met and the places that he met them at and the food that they gave him. We honor the love that he brought to our lives and the deep care that he had for his family. And we honor his family who took such deep care for him. We remember 
the young person with the curly hair, the person who lived in a pool as much as humanly possible, except when it was time to eat. <laughs> Our beloved Sean Sokol. And so as we prepare ourselves to honor his memory today and to make that transition in our hearts from being able to make memories with him to now having to make memories by bringing him with us. We share some words of our tradition, some words of our psalms to express some of the hopes that we have for his soul and for our own. So I'm going to begin with Psalm 121, which is not in your booklet, so you're just going to have to bear with me for one moment. Esa heinai el heharim Esa heinai el heharim me ayin yavo yavo ezri 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 I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where will my help come from? We pray that at this time that our help comes from Adonai, maker of heaven and earth. We pray that God will not let your foot give way, that the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps, but that God is your guardian, your protection at your right hand. We pray that the sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night, but that God will guard you from all harm. God will guard your soul, your going and coming now and forever. And as we pray that Sean is now protected by God, that his soul is at peace, we invite you to turn in the inside of your programs to the 23rd Psalm as we read together. Adonai ro'i lo'ech sarbinot desha yarbitseni. We say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. God leadeth me beside the still waters. God restores my soul. God leads me in the paths of righteousness for God's name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of God forever. And as we express these hopes for Sean's soul, to know his love and to know that just as he communicated with us in life through small little words and gestures, we will now, we pray, hear his voice when we need to hear him and remember the smiles that he has brought to our hearts. He has become a part of us. And so we show honor for him by lifting up words of chesped, words of respect and remembrance. And so we're going to begin this process by allowing Melissa Kaufman, his sister, to come forward to share some words. Okay. i try to do this. I just want to let you know that I could hear Sean saying this is his party and he wants cake, and then he wants hot dogs. So that's what we're going to believe. That That's why we're here today. We're here today to remember my baby brother, Sean, and to honor, honor his life. I remember so many times with Sean. I remember all the things he couldn't do, like not talk, even though many of us understood the Sean language. He couldn't do many things other people take for granted every day. 
Sean was someone who never forgot anyone. He wasn't so comfortable with you the first time he met you, but after the second time, he remembered your name, where you lived, what you fed him, and even felt comfortable walking around your house. My friends have even recently told me how Sean was at places with them and myself. They remember my old roommate. She said she remembered Sean at our apartment, scoping around the place. My sorority sisters remember Sean with my parents at, at my college events and excited to be there. Another friend told me she remembered him being at the airport before I left for Israel, and he kept saying, Missy, on the plane. My friends and I often took Sean trick-or-treating, and their families welcomed Sean into their home and gave Sean all the candy he wanted. Another one of my friends said she remembered Sean being at the, at the surprise party. She threw me and remembered Sean constantly asking for Missy's cake. Some things in Carly and Cindy's lives he never missed. Whether it be a dance show, a birthday party, graduations, he was so excited to be a part of it. He was so excited just to be included. His baby book, I recently read that my mom wrote a special memory that Sean was so good at my bat mitzvah. My mom also wrote that Sean loved swimming. I think he was part fish. At age three, he would be in the pool all day long, and that didn't change all throughout his life until Clearbrook, since they didn't have a pool. We just missed it. We grew up going on vacations, and we could not be in any hotel without a pool. I remember my parents taking Sean, me, Carly, and Sydney to SeaWorld to swim with the dolphins. Sean had no problems with the dolphins, only me. Oh, another memory I have with Sean is when he went to Spain when, with my parents. I was with him. I was six months pregnant with Carly, and I didn't feel good eating the food. But me and Sean split ramen noodles in the hotel, and we were just fine with that. Sean also wanted to ride the elevator up and down and look out the glass windows on every floor, and we did that for over two hours. I remember, I remember, it reminded me of the Brian walking around Sean on the hospital floor on Thanksgiving Day for over six hours and looking out the window. And we did, and he did it six hours with Sean looking at the window. Um, Sean loved to walk around and look out the windows and at malls and grocery stores. Neil took him to many different parks around Vernon Hills just to walk around. Sean enjoyed going places with being with family. Sean's own birthday parties and even his bar mitzvah was all family and our friends. Sean didn't have his own set of friends. His best friends were Brian and Adam. <laughs> I want to thank Carly, who really wanted to come from Israel to be here. And I kept telling her she was in his life when he was healthy and living. And that's part of, that's the special part, not coming at the end. But she made sure that Sean felt comfortable and treated him with respect every day of his life, every single day, for letting me put up with a lot of phone calls and a lot of things, giving up their trip to Florida and letting Neil take them alone. It was very hard. They didn't really understand why their mother had to stay back but for letting their mother give so much of herself and not always being there for them. I want to thank my kids for that. I find happiness in knowing that Sean will live on in all our memories. Sean may not have lived a perfect life, but he lived a good one, and then more than one time. Sean gave us the gift of unconditional love. Unconditional love is even when it hurts, when it's not easy, it's not loving, but simply loving him, simply not being there with him, but being in love with him. That's, that's what love is. And that is the greatest triumph of any life, especially Sean's. Sean taught us how to live without words, limits, and without any reasons. And I have to believe that. Thank you, Melissa. 
and as you expressed, it's not always easy to have a person like Sean in your life and to have the responsibilities for taking care of him. And yet, there's so much that you can learn and gain from having him as a part of your world. And he is so lucky, so fortunate to have such a loving family who devoted themselves to his care. And now we're going to invite Emily and Zachary to come forward. Sorry, kid. <clears throat> Just had to stand up here, too. Yeah. A few things Sean loved most in life, Brian, Adam, his photo albums, Ginger Z, The Pool, and food. Mm -hmm. There were also a few things to really get Sean's attention. Food was one of them. I mean, how many times do we hear about Bob's chicken or hot dogs? The other tactic to get Sean's attention was Melissa. <laughs> Anytime Sean decided to have an attitude, the reasonable way to handle the situation was to threaten Mr. Shawnee J by saying, do you want to go to Missy's? Missy's coming or Missy's here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Missy. Um, I mean, he sat down real quick after that. But all jokes aside, Sean, you were very much loved. As much as you drove us crazy with the crumbs on the floor, flushing the toilets, the repeating, breaking our chairs, um, we will miss you asking if we were sad or, in my case, mad. So go drive Grandpa crazy once again. And for the last time, Shawnee, do you want to go to Missy's? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for these wonderful little moments of remembrance and knowing the way that he could just reach out to you and know how you're feeling. It's a special gift. He knew. And so now we're going to hear from Katrina and Haley as they come forward to share some words about their uncle. Growing up with Sean made for a very memorable childhood. He was at every birthday party, bar mitzvah, pool party, basically any party Sean was there. You could always count on him making a splash in the pool or the bathroom. He always filled the room with laughter by showing his love for his family in different ways, especially us drops. He always made sure mom was exactly on time with lunch at 12 o'clock on the dot and it had to be a grilled cheese with one pickle and a bag of chips. He followed Emily everywhere, including escalators. He loved watching Alaskan bush people with dad every night after dinner. Sometimes he opened doors on Zach. But most importantly, he made sure to always check on my mental stability. Sean was always my company, whether it was in the car with his hat off, leg up, hand out the window, or just at the kitchen table. Sean, there's so many words to describe you, but nobody can replace you. You were always my topic of choice in school essays, but you always found a way to make us laugh, whether it was ripping ass, breaking the floor, flashing Zach, or just making sure I'm in my room so you could slam the door. We always loved watching you run away from Missy because we ran with you. Out, out of this family, Sean was the most rememberable. We will forever love and miss you, Shawnee. Thank you for sharing, and certainly now Sean will uh, be able to always check in on you <laughs> in a different kind of way. And now we're going to hear from Karen, who's going to share some words of remembrance. First, I want to say thank you, everyone, for coming out today. I know this is not exactly how we like to spend our Christmas break. Um, but let's hope I can get through this. When our parents passed away, I had no problem sitting down and writing a eulogy. In fact, I began writing it before they even had their final breath. But with Sean, this wasn't the case. Probably because how do you say goodbye to your baby brother? Maybe because it's just not supposed to be this way. As much as we thought Sean hated to be dragged to all the stores and garage sales over the years, I now believe he might have actually enjoyed them. For Sean, it was, let's go, get in, time to get in the car, go, go, go. He wasn't just sitting around doing nothing. That wasn't Sean. He had to keep busy. Our parents took him everywhere. He traveled to places like Spain, Israel, Georgia, California, Hawaii, Florida, and, of course, Disneyland and Disney World. He never complained. 
that wasn't that he wasn't having fun or didn't get a souvenir, so unlike the children I know. <laughs> Each of us had a special relationship with Sean. He knew which niece and nephew belonged with each of us, and he would ask the kids whenever we were around. With David and Jeannie, Sean was calm and quiet. Special moments were the places he went to see, see them, like in Chicago, Washington, Georgia, or Hawaii. He would get ex excited knowing that he would get to see Sienna and Ben on these special trips. Sean's relationship with Missy or Melissa was that of his traveling buddy and his voice advocate. Neil would take Sean out and walk around the mall and then out to lunch. If Melissa was with Sean without the kids, Sean would always ask where Carly and Sydney were. Sean's relationship with Stephanie was, I believe, was of a protector. Stephanie was the youngest for quite some time, but Sean, when Sean came along, she wasn't jealous of her baby brother. She would make sure she played with him, read to him. She would calm Sean down by gently scratching his arm, and up until the last day, Sean would give you his hand to rub, and then he would relax. For me, my relationship was at first jealousy, not because Sean was born, more because Sean was born the day before my birthday, <laughs> and my own birthday seemed to disappear after that. But just like everyone else, I wanted to protect him and keep him from all the discerning eyes. Sean loved coming to my house, not only because Bob is a fabulous cook, and one of Sean's favorite dishes was Bob's chicken, but he absolutely loved playing in the pool, and he could be in the pool for hours and hours. Sean's internal clock always told him when lunch and dinner were. When it was lunchtime, he would take out the air fryer, the bread, the cheese, and waited for me to get off my conference calls. <laughs> Sean also knew that when Bob came home, it was time for dinner. He would then clear the table and wait. Sean would also ask the girls if Emily was mad or if Katrina was sad. When Sean was ready to go, it was time to go. He was done. Sean also had a special relationship with his cousin Adam, and he absolutely loved hanging out with him whenever he could. He loved flipping through Adam's bar mitzvah album and looking at all the old photos. Yet, his relationship with Brian was unbreakable. Each other's confident, best friend, and rock. As Brian would say, wherever Sean went, sh or wherever he went, Sean went too. Brian said that one of Sean's favorite songs was Van Halen, Jump. For most of us, we know what jump was for Sean. And every time he was in the car, that was his first request. Out of all of us, Brian was the one Sean could go to and only one Sean would really listen to. Sean's heart was huge, his laughter infectious, his repeating nauseating. But when the laughter and repeating stopped, that's when we all knew something was not right. That was just not Sean. We understood Sean's needs and his, his language. We understood the patience and hard work it took to take care of him, and we all miss him so very much. So, Sean, this is not goodbye, but see you later. Thank you, Karen. And indeed, this is the time to, to let go of how he left us, as you said, the time in which he wasn't Sean and to re-embrace the ways in which he lived, the ways in which he filled us with so much light and so much laughter. And so as we remember him today, we remember the love and, yes, we embrace the challenges that came along with taking care of him. But we recognize that he also brought us a great deal of perspective and a way of understanding challenge in our world as we witnessed his way of approaching every day of life. And the poem, but the poet Margaret Stangster wrote, rise and meet the daylight, be strong and do your best with an honest heart and childlike trust that God will do the rest. And in many ways, this is how Sean lived with a faith, maybe not in God, necessarily, but in his family. That he would have what he needed from you. And that gave him the strength to rise and meet the daylight. 
to try his best and to get out there with an open heart and live. You were his world. His siblings, David and Jeannie, Melissa and Neil, Karen and Robert and Bob and Stephanie and his best friend and brother, Brian and Kimberly. He loved, loved so dearly his nieces and nephews, as you heard from some of them, Haley and Emily, Carly, Sienna and Zachary, Sydney, Benjamin, Katrina, Jacob, and Logan. You were his world. And he, though he couldn't say it in exact words, made you know that you were loved as well. When Sean was born, he didn't need to talk necessarily because he had five siblings who were ready and willing to talk for him. And as many of you said, you could understand his language. And his big, curly, popcorn hair stood out in your memories. The hair that you just wanted to grab when he was younger. That reminded you of popcorn, that he loved popcorn, and loved to leave a trail of popcorn wherever he went. As you said, you, between your parents, who took such loving care of him and had such devotion to him, they took him everywhere. And that's why he knew where every bathroom was at every shopping mall. And if Sean met somebody, he was they were in his head and in his heart forever. Some of the people who you have stopped having contact with 15, 20 years ago, Sean would still ask you about when you'd see him. As he grew, we knew that we had to make accommodations for him, and that made us make accommodations in our own lives. Many sacrifices were made to give him the life that he was able to live. And yet, his joy brought us so much. And Brian, you said any time that you could make his life better, that was the world to you. It was a gift. And so it doesn't feel like a sacrifice all the time. Because you knew that you were helping him to experience life in ways that he wouldn't have had the opportunity to if he didn't have such a loving support network. And so you helped him to find the things that he loved, as you mentioned, swimming and food, old black and white movies, especially Shirley Temple and Home Alone. He always laughed when the kids were being yelled at, probably because he loved getting your dad to yell at him. His, your parents were very protected, uh, pr protective of him. He, they brought him to the Special Olympics in Chicago, and he thrived there, but they never let him go too far away. But they brought him, they found a, a school in Morton Grove where he could participate in community and activities, and it was a big deal to him. They even found a big brother, Julio, to could spend time with him and take him to the Y or the movies. And despite his limited ways of communicating, Sean was not to be underestimated. When your father was still alive, sometimes Sean would have breakfast with your dad, and then Julio would come and pick him up, and Sean would say, breakfast? <laughs> Julio thought he didn't have breakfast, so Sean got a second breakfast. He knew what he was doing. Sean loved the different jobs that he could learn to do and took them on with pride, whether it was clearing the garbage uh, or cleaning up during a party or doing laundry in his way. And he loved overstuffing the washer and dryer on purpose. Let's, let's be honest. Just to get your dad upset. <laughs> he knew how to... to, to 
manipulate those around him to his benefit. One day when he was with at Brian and Kim's and Brian wasn't there, Kim was there to make his cheese sandwich and he somehow convinced you to use a, make it in a pan instead of a toaster. And so from now on, every time Kim was there, he needed the cheese sandwich that way. And you became not just Kim, you became Kim Cheese. <laughs> Your family's loving care brought him to the ability to become bar mitzvah in his way, a moment that was so meaningful to your parents and so meaningful to him and a memorable time for all of you. And it was a, a time that reminds you that any time you were putting him into different clothes, he knew that it was a party. And so uh, to make sure that he kept going, you just always told him it was his party. And that's kind of how he lived. It was always Sean's party. And in some ways, that's how we should all live. Because life is a gift each and every day. When I asked you what lessons you learned from him, Brian, you said you learned from him that life isn't really all that hard. Because you see Sean and what he goes through every day, you know that you don't have it hard at all. Yeah, there are things we have to do in life, but we can do them. And you said that you saw that Sean would teach others to take this perspective. Because when Sean would see someone who needed help, someone in a wheelchair, he would want to come and help push them. He showed you that everyone has a way that they can always help. Everyone has a gift that they can give, no matter who they are. He taught you all laughter. He taught you to take on bigger challenges and responsibilities than you thought you ever could because you knew you had to do it for him. And now you know you can do that for one another when you need. Sean loved puzzles, solving things. He would put them together as quickly as he could. But once he got it t done, he was ready to move on. Another lesson that we should probably all live, that when we accomplish our challenges, maybe we need to just move p past them. And he refused to miss out on any of the life events of his nieces and nephews. Never complained, but actually enjoyed probably even more than your parents. The times he got to go to your shows and plays, your sports events, the various reasons to gather. And Sean was never intimidated by people around him. As Brian, you mentioned, you remember the story of going to Northbrook Court with him and your cousin Jory, and you saw, as you were coming in, a license plate on a car that it just must have been Michael Jordan's. And so you waited around with him, and sure enough, Michael Jordan came out. You went up to him, you asked for his autograph, and Sean went up to Michael Jordan and kicked him right on his sur surgically repaired ankle. <laughs> Luckily, Jordan just laughed it off. But that was, that was Sean. Never intimidated by those around him and always wanting to make sure that he was a part of the conversation in any way he could be. And so as we are here, because he has come to his end in physical presence, now is our time to bring him with us and to remember the ways that he would repeat himself again and again to help us remove ourselves from whatever it was that might have been wasting our time and allow us to focus on what was right in front of us. Maybe that's what we'll hear whenever we need that reminder. We'll hear him bringing us right back to the present. And that's why I want to leave you with 
just a couple of words from the poet Merritt Malloy, who writes, when I die, I want to leave you something, something better than words or sounds. Look for me and the people I've known and loved. And if you cannot give me away, at least let me live on in your eyes and not on your mind. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands, by letting bodies touch bodies, by connecting with children and family. Because love doesn't die. People do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. That's how Sean lived. Giving away love every moment. And now it's our time to make his memory a blessing for us by living in his way, by giving love away openly and honestly and fully as much as we can every moment. And that way we can hear him, the echo of his life in ours every day. And so as Brian requested, in Sean's own words, he would say, later. And so as Sean has left our physical presence, but has left us with so much in our hearts, it's now our time to say the prayer for his soul, a prayer that expresses our hope that he is now protected under the shadow of God's wings in a, in a place of love and safety. And so we say our El Malay Rachamim prayer, which you can find on the inside of our programs. And I invite you to rise if you are able for this prayer. El Malay Rachamim. Shochein bamromim, Hamit se minuchane huna, Tahat kan fe hashina, Im kidoshim, Utahorim, Kizohar harakia, Mazirim, Et nishmat. Chaim Leib ben Haini Charye Shahalach le Holamo Baal Harachamim Yasti Rehu Beseter Kenfav le Holamim Vayitror Bitrachayim Et Nishmato Adonai Hunakalato Vianuach Bishalom Al Mishkavo Vinomar Amen. Now we read together El Male Rachamim, O God, full of compassion. Thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence, among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament, unto the soul of Sean Sokol, who has gone unto eternity. Lord of mercy, bring him under the cover of thy wings, and let his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession, and may his repose be peace. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, this concludes the services here in the chapel. The interment and burial services will continue at Waldheim Cemetery in Forest Park. For those of you traveling with us to the cemetery and the funeral procession, please do keep the following safety precautions in mind. Please make sure that your bright headlights and your four-way hazard flashes are on at all times. 
Please be sure to obtain an orange funeral safety sticker for your windshield, and we will be providing several of the cars in the procession with a magnetic orange flag to be placed on top of your car. Please travel as close as safety permits to the car in front of you to avoid any gaps in our procession. And for your own safety and security, I would suggest not speaking or texting while driving to the cemetery in the funeral procession. As we make our way through the various intersections and along the highway, if the car in front of you goes through the intersection, please do proceed with caution. Feel free to use your horn liberally, but please make every attempt to follow the car in front of you as we make our way to the cemetery. The family will be together at the Straub residence at 25930 North Graceland Court in Barrington. They're going to be together today as they return from the cemetery until 8 p.m., Thursday from 11 until 8 p.m., and Friday from 11 till 4 p.m. The family's also requested any memorial contributions in Sean's memory to either Autism Speaks or to Congregation or Shalom. All of that information regarding donations and Shiva is available in the service folder that you should have received when you came into the chapel today. And if you did not receive one when you came in, we do have those for you as you leave. And for those of you joining us online, all of that information regarding memorial contributions and Shiva is available on our website. The following individuals have been asked to serve as pallbearers. Neil Kaufman, Robert Straub, Jacob Kenyon, Logan Kenyon, Adam Potters, Chad Potters, Jory Potters, Zachary Straub, and Johnny Kites. And at this time, I would ask everyone to please rise and stand in place. I would ask for the pallbearers to come forward alongside the photos as we escort the family and the rabbi and the casket from the chapel. Thank you, and you may return to your cars. Good. 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 Good